say hello to our little friend, Lock Mount Gen 2. Okay, y'all, we are going to get started with the quick set. Take off the door rake and put back on. And first thing that you will notice is this keyhole is upside down. We are going to clear that up while we're re it. Another thing you might notice is it's standing off. This is pretty common with quick set when somebody's trying to put on their own lock and the hole is too small. Back in ye olden days, we didn't have power tools and such to drill locks. So the smaller the hole, the easier it was to drill out. And as a result, you have these locks that come nowadays prepped for the two and an eighth inch hole. And when people try to put it on a smaller hole, it does this standoff. It's not great, but I did this on purpose so that later on in this series, we can redrill that hole. But today we're gonna go ahead and take off the quick set knob and deadbolt. No keys is pretty much how I'm gonna do all of these. Okay, get your bitch ass out of here. So when I'm screwing locks from a door and I do have very small hands, I will note that I hold the lock like this. There's Usually just enough room for almost anybody to be able to do this. Even though this is builder's timber and it's thinner than a regular door, you should still be able to at least kind of hold it like this. And what that's doing is it's letting it, keeping it from falling, you know, to the ground. We're gonna come in with our number two Phillips, round shank, four inch, and unscrew, just like you're screwing, unscrewing any kind of screw. It is at an angle a little bit so that may throw a few people off but you can pretty easily get to the screws especially when you have the round shank screwdriver so we'll go ahead and take this guy off okay yep there we go on quick sets to get the knob off you do have to push the latch in otherwise it won't come out so push the latch in, take it out, and then when you're putting it back in, just hold the latch in. Deadbolt fairly easily on quick sets. You just have the two screws. Here I'm holding it to keep it from falling off. Now typically what I'll do on jobs, if there's no kids or dogs or anything that's gonna mess with it, I'll set all the housings and stuff right by the door, out of the way so nobody trips on it, of course. But you don't want to do this necessarily if there's kids, dogs, uh, maids with vacuums. If you have no keys, we're going to be keying into this key. First thing is you want to take one of the locks, make sure the new keys do not turn in it. And there are two ways to figure out the cuts of this key. There's gauges out there just like this. So if we went through and we measured it, we see that's, that's four, six, all right two, five, four, six, two, five, and two. If you don't have a gauge, because you won't have a gauge for a lot of different ones, you can use your micrometer. I failed to mention the micrometer in the tools episode, but the micrometer does tell you, so that's 277, 210. So we, if we write this down, 277, 210, 303, 231, and last one, make sure it's not on a point, 301, 301. There's, there may be a little discrepancy depending on how good your micrometer is. You don't have to have a super expensive micrometer. This is a Harbor Freight one. It works just fine for what we're doing. And we're gonna go up here to the quick set. Now, just, to clear this up, I, yeah, it was a little confusing because I didn't put this in. This is an old, old, old pen kit. Nowadays, really, it's 195, 219, and 264. I kind of briefly touched on that, but I wrote it in. Just so we're not confused, I'm actually gonna put the picture of the one right now up in my truck. That is actually what kind of you go by. And, and you even see it shows 288. I use 285. 171, 195, 219, 240, 264, 285 are basically the ones that you want to use. But there is leeway because of tolerances in the plugs. So anyway, just to clear that up. Match it up to these numbers over here. 277 is close enough to 282. So we have three. 210 is uh, six. 213, 303, that's 305, so that's two, so that would be two as well, and then 231 is 236 right there, so 264. So that tells you 
That's what those numbers mean. That tells you that. And we're going to go ahead and grab our pickle fork and start removing these. Usually I just set the deadbolt plugs down just like that and pry it off. So no big deal there. Be careful not to bend it or twist it or anything like that. Okay, with the doorknob, if you look at this, what's called the spring cage, take this end and you put it in, there's two sides. One side does not move at all, it's fixed. You can just see it's a bent piece of metal. And the other side has that, has that open area where you can push this in and turn it. So if you push that in and turn it just right, see we have, see we have that. And what's happening there is I'll take a flathead screwdriver and just push in here and tug it out. And if we see this spindle, that's what that's what that's called. See how that's pushing that out of the way? That's that's what it allows us to get that out is because we push this in and turn it. And it moves that up out of the way and let you pull the spindle out. Now, this is sometimes the tricky part. Take this end, and we want to run it basically just like this. We're going to take it at an angle and then push in. Now, one thing you could do, you know, when, when you're learning this, is you could actually use two of these guys. That's why I said buy a five pack. All right, and we're going to hold it down. You don't even really have to hold it down. Oh, see how it slipped between there? You got to got to watch that. You're listening when you're doing stuff as well. So there we go. Let's put that in there. And that'll let you slip that down a little bit easier. But normally what I'll do for speed is I'll just take the end at an angle, just like that, and then push it down. Now, we want this to be as centered as possible. It automatically wants to spring from one side to the other. But to get this guy out, you really want it right there in the center and if you turn it over or you could tap it all right we're going to tap the back of it see how it pops that out what that's doing is this is a little bit compressed in there and it's biting into the back of that when you push this through see how it comes through just like that so that's why you want it that's why you want it centered like that because you want this to be kind of centered on these guys and when you when you push it in it compresses those and lets this pop right out now at this point I'll go ahead remember it was upside down I'll go ahead and put this back on and you want this when you're putting it back on the door you want this to be centered as well you don't want it to be to one side or the other you want it directly centered so we're gonna leave that just like that and then when we carry all this back to the door we're not gonna put this back in there until we get back to the door. So at this point, we have the clip we still have to deal with. So we'll go ahead and take that clip off right there. Now, I will be going through this a little quick because we're gonna be doing this repetitively, as well as the fact that you can, you can rewind this, right? So we're gonna take our blank quick set key and we're gonna do what's called shimming it. Since we don't have a key, you have to have a key on, on every lock to turn and take apart. So we're gonna make sure our end is nice and sharp. We're gonna push this key in, put this shim in, just like that. And as we pull out on this key, those pins are allowed to drop in there. And as we're pulling out, we're pushing forward. Not hard, just gentle. We're going in and out, in and out. Now, quick set original pins, as we'll take a look at when we get this open, they are, they're a little funny in that both ends, okay, there we go, we just passed five. Okay, there we go, we just passed four. Okay, there we go, we passed three. And, and then it turns. Most of the time when you get to the one or two spot, you're allowed, you're able to turn it just like that. So we'll go ahead and shim these as well. Okay, that one went already. Now, a lot of times you'll get hung up on a spring and you may have to totally start over. Just be aware of that. Worst case scenario, if you're having a real hard time, you can pop this cap off and dump everything out. And that's typically has to be done on corroded ones where, you know, it's just being super difficult. Okay, there we go. Turning it, turning it about to the three o'clock or whatever position, whichever way it'll turn for you. As long as it's away from that 12 o'clock position. Yep, yep, 
Yep. Okay, there's three, four, and five. Okay, we're done there. Now what we're going to do is we're going to grab a plug follower with quick set. You can use, uh, you know, they, they have, there's a, here's an actual quick set one. We'll use it. Uh, make sure the plug's turned far enough and push to just like that. All right, we're going to take our key, check it. It is definitely different. I dispose of the pins if you don't want to dispose of your pins and you want to sort them. I would highly recommend not doing that for a customer because pins do get worn down. So I just grabbed the three. Looking at the quick set chart up here, three was what we had. So I'm going to do 219. Yep. And what we had, six. So that's 285. Uh, two. Now I have not mentioned max yet. That's this number right here, max five. That is maximum adjacent cut. Uh, that is, uh, you can't have a really high cut next to a really deep cut or a really shallow cut next to a really deep cut. I have definitely done a video on max, but just FYI, there are, that's what that max means. So when you put this back in, you wanna turn it a couple of times, get in the habit. You're gonna be doing this forever. Push your fingers up against the plug because you don't have a clip. If you pull it out right now, all your top pins and springs are going to pop out. So you want to push your finger up against this, just like that, until it comes out. You want to make sure and do that always, otherwise you'll pull out the plug and then you'll have to redo everything. So that's what I do. On uh, knobs and such, you do have to be careful. You have to be a little bit cautious with what kind of plug follower you're using. Because if there's a gap between there, you're going to have that top pin blow up problem. We can see this guy is one of these cheaper ribbed style. This is pretty common nowadays. These holes right here are for construction balls. We're not going to worry about that right now. Just ignore it. If you do find little tiny balls in these, just dump them out. You don't. You don't need them at all, so just FYI. All right, we'll go ahead and get this guy pinned up and back together and on the door. I just put one in the wrong chamber. I'm gonna dump that out. And uh, 285, there we go. Make sure it's all level. That's one important thing when you're putting it in, make sure everything is nice and level. Turn it again. 180 or 90 degrees, whichever way. Try it, hold your finger against it, and pull out. Okay, now we're gonna clip the clip back on. You can do it with your fingertip. Usually you just wanna make sure that it definitely clips down in there into, this, into where it's supposed to clip into. Okay. Also, I will note there is a little cutout on that tailpiece. You, you have to, you, this clip is what holds it in. So I put that on pretty quick. I'll take it off and show you what I'm talking about there. If your clip won't go down, that means it's not going into that little open area. Also, make sure this isn't bent. I see these bent sometimes. That needs to be about that thickness. So if it's squeezed in or something, it's going to cause you problems. Okay. Everything's good, everything's good. Now that the clips are all on, you want to check it with the key without holding it because you don't want it to come off on the customer. So I'll check two or three times as well as use your lubricant. Give it a little squirt there and on the back because as you're turning it, that's metal on metal and you want it to be nice and lubricated as well. So I squirt, squirt in the keyhole and squirt on the back of it. And another good area is that part of the quick set knob needs it. If you look at your latch, there's this half moon cutout. This half moon goes through it. So remember, push your latch in and run it through. Make sure it's not like this. You obviously, those holes in the latch are there for a reason. Make sure both 
screw holes are through. Make sure your spindle's pushed all the way in. We're gonna grab our knob and it also has a half moon area right there. So we do this. We're gonna gently turn this until it slips down. Make sure our screw holes are aligned at the three o'clock and nine o'clock position. And I'm holding it on the outside here. So let's go ahead. This is one of those little kicky things that just practice makes perfect on this part, y'all. You gotta, takes a little bit to get used to, to doing that. Luckily on the quick set, they do have those little tips that let you feel it drop into it. So again, I'm holding it. I'm gonna tighten it down, but I'm not tightening it down all the way, all right? Just tightening it down until we get to the area of the, the where it's not not super tight yet because if we see one thing that's common with quick sets is this part right here I'll tighten it down a little too much see how it's got this up and down leeway you want to make sure it's you want to make sure it's straight if you look at the latch you don't want it angled up you don't want it angled down you kind of want it right there in the middle so then i'm going to hold it i'm going to tighten one side down mostly I'm gonna come over to the other side, tighten it down. We're gonna check it, not check it, don't check it yet. Remember, we want it in the halfway position. If you turned it here, or if you turned it there, you don't want it there, you want it halfway, which is kind of at an angle. Otherwise, the plug will not pop in, and we are definitely putting it in right side up. So come in, and sometimes this is, easier than others but as long as it's halfway like that you should be good so we're going to check that and check to make sure the latch pops out and then we're going to check the key of course make sure it comes out without pulling all the guts out looks good to me okay we're going to give it one more little tug tight 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 and and then once again, check it. Good, good. And go to the deadbolt. On the deadbolt, the outside with the screw threads is always gonna have the hollow side. I see these switched around a lot, but on the outside cylinder is where that goes. So if we look at that, we see the little flap. If you hold this from the outside like that, you want this flat. You don't want it that way. You want it that way to match that we're going to come in put it in there just like that same way with the interior if this is a double cylinder it has a little flat on it and they intersect with each other so i'm going to run that through just like that oh there it goes it, it fell in okay i'm going to grab this now this is kind of the awkward part of it is getting it getting it back on i'm looking on the outside to make sure it's straight and I'm gonna kind of tighten it down again just like the uh, doorknob we're gonna tighten it down just a little bit and make sure that it's kind of centered on there depending on the construction of the door if you over tighten this part it won't work so as you're tightening it I'm gonna try the key on my outside drop my screwdriver and try it on the inside. It is working okay. You wanna make sure it fully extends. Also with the door shut, you wanna make sure it fully extends into the strike. If it only goes that far, you need to adjust the, uh, the, the strike part of it because deadbolts like this are designed to go fully out so that you can't push it back in. So there we go. That is Recan, a quick set. Standard quick set, the things that you're gonna run across, the lock brand that you're probably gonna run across quite a bit. Next up on the list is gonna be the older style quick set and possibly lever handles and then smart key. So, catch you then.